Thank you. Thank you very much, and I'm thrilled to be in this beautiful place. Boy, are they, are they messing up California, but we're thrilled to be here with the conservative patriots who are leading the charge to take back this state from the radical left lunatics. The first step to saving California begins Super Tuesday. You know Super Tuesday? March 5th, 2024, the same day that the radical left Democrats are taking me to trial. I wonder how that happened. I don't think it's going to happen either. Disgraceful what they're doing. With your support in this election, we're going to win the California primary in a very big, beautiful, historic landslide. And, you know, most candidates would get, but then we're going to win California. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll say it a little bit differently, because we would win California in a general election if they didn't have a rigged voting system, where they send out 22 million ballots. Think of that. All mail-in ballots, 22 million ballots. People getting five ballots, six ballots. Nobody knows where they're going, who they're going to, who signs them, who delivers them, and who the hell counts them. Nobody knows. We would win. You should see the crowds of people outside. You wouldn't believe it. It makes you look like small-timers, okay? <laughs> now, if anybody would like to give up your seat for some of the people outside, we will do that. Would anybody raise your hand? Other than that, it's a very well-run election system, other than those little things. It's a disaster. It's a rigged system, and it's a shame that it's been allowed to go on for so long. It's really sad. Every time I come here, we have the biggest crowds, and then I'm told automatically that if you're a Republican running for president, you'll lose by 5 to 10 points. We don't lose by 5 to 10. Maybe some others would, but we're not going to lose by 5. We're going to win. We would win. I don't believe it when they say it, but the state is rigged. It's a rigged election. It's a horrible thing, and we have to turn it back. This is a state that the right Republican can win and, I think, actually win easily. Then all you have to do is you look at — go outside and look at what's going on in the streets outside. And it's with love, too, tremendous love. There's not a lot of people — there's no people that are negative, actually. No way we lose this state in a real election. If this was a real election, there's no way. If we had a real election with the real polling booths, if you had real polling — you don't have any polling booths. You have people signing something, dropping it in the mail, then who the hell knows what happens after that? It's ridiculous. But if we had polling booths, same-day voting, voter ID, and no mail-in ballots other than for those who are legitimately very sick or in faraway military, we would win this state by a lot. And. I don't know why more people aren't bringing that up and talking about it, because it's really something you have to do. But we're going to get it done when we win, when we win the big one, because we're leading by a lot. We're going to go over some polls. If you'd like to. Don't forget, we're going over polls. I only talk about polls when I'm doing well. Remember that, please. <laughs> but when we win, we're going to come in here, and you're going to straighten out your election, because we need fair and free elections in this country, and California doesn't have it. We have open borders. We have rigged elections. That's not a bad — that's not a bad thing for the enemy to watch, that I can tell you. And they talk about it all the time. I'll solve the border problems within 24 hours of taking office. We had the safest borders in the history of our country just three years ago. But the rigged election has to be solved by you, the people, and we're going to start working on it right now. But I want to put those thoughts in your head. We have to bring it back. We have to get rid of this mail-in ballot stuff. You know, Jimmy Carter, I know a lot of you think that uh, he wasn't a great president, but actually, compared to Biden, he was one of the greatest presidents. The happiest person on Earth right now is Jimmy Carter, because he said, darling, I'm no longer a bad president, because compared to this guy, when I'm president, that will be a primary focus, your election, and other things that we're going to talk about together having to do with California. Nonetheless, 
We're going to crush crooked Joe Biden next November. We're going to make California great again. And we're going to make America great again. We are going to make it great. I want to begin by thanking California Republican Party Chair Jessica Milan Patterson for the introduction, as well as doing a fantastic job as RNC National Committeeman uh, and the chair of this whole group of incredible people. And your National Committee man is Sean Steele, and Committee Woman is a friend of mine, a person that actually wins cases for us. Harmeet Dillon, where is Harmeet? Where is Harmeet? She's around here someplace with her incredible husband. Her incredible husband. Will you stand up? I hear he likes me, Harmeet, more than you do, and I think. Thank you both very much for being here. Seriously, she's done a fantastic job, and we love her. Along with a tough Cookie, I want to tell you, he did such a great job in the administration. A friend of yours, a person that loves your state a lot, Rick Grinnell. Rick Grinnell. And a fantastic — thank you, Rick. Great job. Tough guy. This guy's tough. And a fantastic mayor. We just flew over Huntington Beach. We flew over. We flew over Tony's uh, beautiful place on Earth, and he keeps it. You don't have problems over there, Tony. Where's Tony? Tony Strickland. You don't have the problems that other beaches have, do they? You don't have encampments <laughs> sitting on the ocean. No, you've done a great job. We just flew over on the plane. They did a big thing, and I was talking to all the people, thousands and thousands of people. I'm speaking from my plane. I said, this is different, but it looked beautiful. You've done a fantastic job as mayor. Thank you very much, Tony. But Tony is showing how we can fight for voter integrity and cleaning up the homelessness and all of the other things that you have to do to make a place work. I mean, you have to do it. And I'm honored today. As you know, I was uh, really honored to get his endorsement, because his endorsement was very meaningful to me. Thank you very much for that endorsement, Tony. We won't let you down. And I'm also honored to have the endorsement of former Lake Forest mayor, somebody very, very respected. Scott Voigt. Where's Scott? Scott, thank you very much. Great honor, Scott. Thank you. Did a great job. For generations, California was known as the embodiment of the America West, American culture, and America's future and our great American dream. You don't hear about the American dream anymore, do you? You used to hear the American dream. The American dream, there's no American dream with Biden, most corrupt president in our history. The Golden State gave us the gold rush, the Golden Gate Bridge, and the golden age of Hollywood. What glamour, what beautiful glamour. If they ever came back from the dead, they'd look and say, what the hell happened to our state? <laughs> Can you imagine? That was a glamorous time. Now they would look and they would say, this can't be happening. It built Liberty Ships, the Sunset Strip, Disneyland, and the Internet and the iPhone. So many things came out of California. It was California that first elected Public office, Republican presidents. How about that? Richard Nixon and Ronald Reagan. Both. Both. But while California was once a symbol of American success today under the radical left fascists and Marxists that run your state, that's who's running your state. Bad people. It's becoming a symbol of our nation's decline. Gavin Newsom and the far-left communists in Sacramento. He did a great job as mayor of San Francisco, didn't he? But the far-left communists in Sacramento, San Francisco, and L.A., cities which are absolutely being destroyed rapidly on a daily basis, have given you sanctuary cities, wide-open borders, mass homeless encampments, out-of-control taxes, soaring income inequality like nobody's ever seen before, Marxist district attorneys, woke tech tyrants — they are woke — rolling blackouts, child sexual mutilation, and roving bands of looters, criminals, and thugs. But other than that, I think they're doing quite a good job. <laughs> Those things are all true. 
What a mess. How the hell do people vote for these people? You, the courageous patriots of California, Republican Party, are now the last line of defense standing between this state and total anarchy. And I am here to tell you that help is on its way. Help is on its way. Can't go on like this. Can't go on like this. We can't go on like this. We won't have a country left. The mission to help you liberate California from communist rule begins at noon on Inauguration Day 2025. 2025. We got to make I'll tell you, the election of 24 is the single most important election in the history of our country. I used to say it about 16. It's the most important, and it was. But this is more important because we're going to lose our country. Our country is going to hell. Our country is being destroyed. Together, we will take on the ultra-left-wing liars, losers, creeps, perverts, and freaks who are devouring the future of this state like a swarm of locusts. And we'll stand up to crazy Nancy Pelosi, who ruined San Francisco. How's her husband doing, by the way? Anybody know? And she's against building a wall at our border, even though she has a wall around her house, which obviously didn't do a very good job. But then you have Kamala Harris. She's great. Gavin Newsom, who's a really — I mean, I watched him the other night with Sean Hannity trying to say that California is wonderful. It's not wonderful. We all know it. It was wonderful. It could be wonderful again, but right now it's really a mess. Maxine Waters, very nice woman, very, very nice. How come she can say things so violently? You will go in and attack them in a restaurant. You'll do this, that. Nothing happens. If I say peacefully and patriotically, oh, there's an insurrection going on here. Maxine Waters, if I ever spoke like her, it would be the electric chair times 15 for me. The man who fell in love with a Chinese spy that they wouldn't take off their top committee, most important committee, Eric Swalwell. What a loser. And then you have, of course, my favorite, Shifty Adam Schiff, Pencil Neck. He's known for one thing, the world's smallest neck. You ever see? I call him Pencil Neck. If you touched him, his neck would break. And we will defeat their corrupt California political machine. No, Shifty Schiff is really — I mean, he is a sick person, that guy. Looks like he won't be your next senator anymore, because he'll have somebody else put in, and then he won't be able to run. Purgatory! Ah, oh, that's too bad. I don't know that he would have won anyway, but now he probably won't be able to run, and he won't run against certain people because he wants to be politically correct, except when it comes to doing numbers on Republicans and keeping it going and hurting our country. But uh, it would look to me like he won't be there. But he's a disaster, that guy. They're all disa — Crazy Nancy is a total disaster. She's nuts. Remember her with the beauty parlor, walking through the beauty parlor? <laughs> Nobody else is to have their hair done. Then you have her. I, I don't know what happened to the owner of the beauty — you know, she's a big MAGA person. How about that? Think Nancy — think Nancy was thrilled when she — Learned that the owner of that beauty parlor, where they taped her walking through with the hair and the whole thing, everyone else is, like, home, using suds on the hair, like I do. <laughs> but I'm the only candidate who will do what it takes to get this job done. And remember, we have to get rid of mail-in ballots. We have to do it. And I was going to tell you, though, before we got off on a tangent, that we talked about Jimmy in a different way. But Jimmy actually had a commission which was very important at the time. And his one basic finding, his most important, was don't use mail-in ballots. They can't work. They will be corrupt. You'll have corrupted elections and lots of other things. But basically, it was a mail-in ballot uh, statement after many months of him and some of the other senior 
Democrats, they literally came to a conclusion, you can't use mail-in ballots. So what do we do? We're always trying to expand them. You know, in France, they use mail-in ballots, and they found they were so corrupt that they gave them up, and they recently had an election, 36 million people, 36 million voted. By 10 o'clock in the evening, you had a winner, you had a loser, and it was over. And nobody complained. They went to all paper with little uh, ID. You ever see what it is to get into the Democrat convention? They had the Democrat — I call it the Democrat. You know, they like to call it the Democratic, because it sounds better. I hate — you know, for a speech, it sounds lousy to say Democrat. But that's what it is. It's called the Democrat National Committee. I don't know why they don't change the name, but they always say, don't ever say that, because it doesn't read well. But I say Democrat, because it does sound bad, frankly. But do you, did you ever see what you have to wear to get into their national convention prior to the presidential election for the primaries and all? You have to wear a thing, the largest sign I've ever seen. It looks like you're uh, trying to sell groceries in a shop that's two blocks. It's like here. It's got your picture. It's got your fingerprints. It's got everything. They probably put Social Security numbers on. They put everything on. But for voting, you can't have anything. There's only one reason they don't want voter ID, because they want to cheat. That's the only reason. No, no voter ID. You have ID on every credit card. You have it on everything. But think — and you know, the interesting — the people of the Democrat Party, it's 87 percent think that you should have voter ID. It's only the leaders, because their policies are so bad that they couldn't get elected. I mean, who want, who's going to get elected with open borders, a woke military, high interest rates, high taxes, a country that's not respected anywhere in the world? We've totally lost our place in the world. Pretty soon, we're going to lose our dollar as currency. It's the worst thing. That'll be worse than losing any war. They are so bad. And now I'm hearing the northern border is a problem. How about that one? The northern border. They're but it's actually becoming less because the southern border is so bad, they can say, you know, with me, they were trying because they couldn't get into it. We had the safest border in history. The safest border in history three years ago. All this guy had to do is go to the beach. Now, he's going to the beach all the time now. He's got a consultant. I don't know, Harmeet, if you know his consultant. He's got a consultant who thinks he looks good in a bathing suit, I guess. And he's at the beach every day. If he would have done that, instead of destroying all of the things we did, we had the greatest — stay in Mexico, a little thing called — remain in Mexico. We had the greatest catch and release. We used to catch and release — release them in our country. Our catch and release was you catch them, release them in Mexico. And Mexico was fine with it, because if they weren't, we were going to put tariffs on their cars like you wouldn't believe. And they said, we'd love to have you do whatever you want to do, sir. Together, we will reverse the decline of America, and we will end the desecration of your once great state, California. This is not a great state anymore. This is a dumping ground. You're a dumping ground. The world is being dumped into California. Prisoners, terrorists, mental patients. You have mental institutions. They say, sir, please don't use the words insane asylum, because that's, you know, that's silence of the lamb stuff. That's big stuff. Mental institutions, sir, is nicer. I said, no, I think I'll mention both. We, mental institutions and then times 10, insane asylum. They're all being dropped. They're all being dropped into our country. We're a dumping ground. When I was president, I got along with Gavin Newsom, but I didn't like what he was doing. Very simple. I liked him. You know, he always goes around telling me we had a very good relationship. We had a good relationship, but I didn't like what he was doing. The people of California don't have water. They pay a fortune for the water. You know, I own something in Palos Verdes. Anybody play my big, beautiful club on the ocean? I actually think it's the best golf course in California, but beautiful with the clubhouse, everything, right on the ocean. And this is really on the ocean. I always say, I have the ocean. Pebble Beach has the bay. There's a big difference. It's true. They talk about Pebble Beach, Pebble Beach. No, no. I have the ocean. They have the bay. You know, I, the ocean tends to be better. Historically, oceans are better than bays. Do we agree, right? <laughs> but I have to pay a fortune for water, to water the grass. I have to pay a fortune. If I told you the number, I don't even want to tell you the number. It's embarrassing. And you have so much water, and we're going to talk about that. 
But during that period of time, I got to know California quite a well. You know, I've owned that for a long time, and it's become a tremendous success. But the taxes that you have to pay and all of the things you have to pay, uh, it's a very, very hard way to make a buck in, in uh, the state. Very hard to do it. At one point, I was riding up a highway with a number of great congressmen, like Devin Nunes at the time, you know, Devin. He's heading up Truth Social. He left. He would have been the top guy in Congress. He wanted to do that. He's doing a phenomenal job. Is everybody on Truth, please? Better than any of them, Truth. And he's, the, he's now the president and doing an unbelievable job. You know, he's the one that figured out Russia, Russia, Russia. I said, anybody that can figure out Russia, Russia, Russia can head up Truth Social. Do you agree? And he and Jim Jordan, they got the Presidential Medal of Freedom because they did such a great job. But, but at one point, with Devin and some of his friends, congressmen, great ones, still there, we were riding up a highway and were fighting so hard. They were fighting so hard for water rights. They actually said, could you come? We don't have any water. I said, no, I didn't know you had a drought. It's a man-made drought, you know that? Man slash women. It's a man women made. I don't know. I don't think women did that, no. Women are too smart to do that. They don't create droughts. No, it's a man-made drought. Let's leave it man-made. I think women will be honored when I say that. But during the trip up the highway, I noticed massive amounts of farmland. It was all over the place, miles and miles. It was absolutely dry and dead. You could see, you know, I'm a real estate guy. I could see the soil was so beautiful, but it was just dry and absolutely dead. Except, does everyone know what I'm talking about? Except for little tiny patches where it was so beautiful, so green. It was greener than any farm I've seen. It was just beautiful. And I asked, what's going on here? Why is it that that land is so fertile, but right next to it for miles and miles, it's just empty, looks like a desert? And they said, because we're in a man-made drought. That's what they called it. We have a man-made drought. I said, what's a man-made drought? He said, we have tremendous amounts of money and other things coming at us to fight this, but it's, it doesn't do any good because Newsom and any Democrat governor, they won't allow us to have water. You know, you have massive amounts of water coming down from up north. So I said, all right, I can understand about the water, but I don't understand why would they do that? Why are these patches so magnificently green? And it's a very small percentage of the land. They go, well, they allow us to water only these small areas, but most of the farmland, they don't let us even touch. They won't let us touch it. If I could do it, it would be billions of billions if they, if they changed this. And we worked on it, and I'll explain that. It would be billions and billions of extra dollars coming into the state and coming into our country. And we have the water. And I said, what about a desalinization plant? Well, people don't like them because, you know. I said, what about a nice, big, beautiful de But they said, we don't really need it, sir. We have so much water, we wouldn't know what to do with it. I said, explain, please. You know, I'm looking at this dry stuff. I said, explain. So much water, but up north, they have a valve. Do you ever see the valve? A massive valve, like your kitchen valve, but multiplied times 10,000. It's the size of this room. And all the water gets turned out and turned into the Pacific Ocean. Do you know that? You have so much water? So sad to see this. I mean, these people, are, it's so stupid. But they don't want the water to come down all the way to Los Angeles and the Central Valley, where we're constantly forced to ration. You have droughts. We're rich people in Beverly Hills. We don't feel so sorry for them, but I do, actually. You know, they pay millions of dollars in taxes. They're taking a shower. They're told to hurry up. You're only allowed a small amount of water when they take a shower. That's why rich people from Beverly Hills, generally speaking, don't smell so good, you know? <laughs> Typically. You ever notice? They're not great. Their hygiene is not good, but it's forced to be that way. So when you meet somebody with a beautiful house in Beverly Hills, you know that person is sort of disgusting under there. <laughs> but where you wash your hands and you're supposed to take no more than 30 seconds, they want a quick, quick hands. And yet, they're paying millions and millions of dollars in taxes. Millions of dollars, these people. And, and whether it's rich people or people that are just paying a small amount of tax, you're allowed to have water, and you can have it for free. For free. You know, we have all those canals. They're dry as a bone. 
So now in Los Angeles, when you have a new home, you have faucets, washing machines, dishwashers, all of the things, but very little water is allowed to come out. Like, as an example, I stayed in one of those houses, and they had a shower head. And I want to really work hard on my hair, and I don't want to take it. <laughs> and I turned on the water. I thought the pipes were broken. They said, no. They call it a restrictor. They have restrictors in the thing. So no water comes out. So I'm standing outside, drip, drip. <laughs> Can't wash the damn hair. The house, $35 million house, and you can't get a — you can't take a shower. <laughs> Honestly, it's a bad way of life. I mean, it really is. It, it, it sort of uh, hurts. And everybody — this goes for everybody. This is all because Gavin Newsom and the radical left Democrats, extremists, and the people that run this state in order to save an extremely unimportant, very little, and nonproductive fish, the Delta smell. Did you ever hear of it? <laughs> little uh, — do they have a picture of it? There it is. That little sucker is causing you to not be able to clean yourself. <laughs> the Delta smelt. Because of that Delta smelt, you don't have any water. You don't have farms. You don't have anything. You're all going bust. And, you know, they were talking last year they're going to have to uh, put massive amounts of restrictions on your water use. It's, it's ridiculous. And then you pay a fortune for it, too. You have so much water. You have no idea. Millions and millions of gallons is sent out. It's just turned out. It, you got to see this thing. Big, massive pipe. Massive. And they turn. It takes a day. It goes boom. At the end of a day, it's turned into the Pacific Ocean. In fact, we should get Harmeet to bring a lawsuit on that one. That's a good lawsuit, Harmeet. That's a good one, Harmeet. That's big stuff. She wants to do it. She'll do it free, because she lives in this area, right? She wants to. But when I was president, all of the work was completed in the federal government to make the big change in the quality of life for California. You could have so much water, you wouldn't know what the hell to do with it. And you had the water. And the papers were done. I got it done at the Commerce Department. Believe it or not, it was mostly a Commerce. Nobody ever thought that could be done. And that was the hard part. The state part was easy. All you have to do is get a governor to sign. But we did all the work. We went to him, Gavin Newsom. And he wouldn't sign it because he wanted to keep the environmental lunatics happy. These are lunatics. And we had it out. You wouldn't believe. But I'll tell you what. Then we had COVID come in. We had a lot of things happening. And we, uh, we did an incredible job. Look, we had the greatest economy in history. The greatest economy in history, twice. We had it twice. But I had the federal government finish everything. All the paper was done. You were going to have so much water, you were going to say, please, please, Mr. President, don't give us any water. We're drowning in this water you're standing up. Coming from Canada, coming from up north when the snow melts, and we didn't know what the hell was going on. And you look at those. You know, we have all the infrastructure done. There are these big concrete bins where you, the water comes rushing down. They're also dry as hell now. They have weeds growing in them. And so it's all there. And the federal work was the hard part, and I got it done, but Gavin didn't want to do it. One of the first things I'm going to do when I get back into office for California is force Newsom to give you water. And by the way, the smelt is doing very badly on top of everything else. It, I think it would do better if it had water, okay, to be honest. So much water that, uh, you know, I mean, it's like just incredible, but the smelt is not doing well. But we're going to get the federal government uh, to get everything done. We have it almost completed. It was totally completed. And I guarantee he will sign it very quickly if he's still the governor by that time. Who the hell knows? You had a recall. How did that work out? How did that work out? Well, one of the candidates running was doing well, and then they said, do you think the election was rigged and stolen? No, I don't. That was the end of his campaign. That was the end. They walked out. That was a, not a good thing to say, not a smart thing to say, and it wasn't truthful. I mean, the, the election was a disaster. But you'll have so much water, and it'll be a great thing. And some of the most fertile, I will tell you, for the farmers in the room, I don't know if you know it or not, but I got $28 billion for the farmers. Some of the far people are farmers here from China. Who the hell else is going to get money from China? Who would ask for money? I said to 
Secretary of Agriculture, Sonny Perdue. I said, Sonny, because China took very big advantage of us during Obama, during the Obama years, and really bad. And at the beginning of mine, I said, what's going on over here? People would complain, and I figured it out. I said, how much damage have they caused the farmers over the last three, four years? They said, so about $28 billion. I say, all right, good. We're going to put a big tariff on. We tariff. We took in hundreds of billions of dollars from China. Nobody knows this. We put in tariffs on their cars coming and everything. In fact, the 27.5% tariff on the cars, they haven't gotten rid of it. Because so much money, it's so big, that they cannot justify getting rid of it. It's unbelievable. You wouldn't have any car plants if I didn't have that. China would have been sending their cars at levels that nobody's ever seen before. But they paid us billions and billions. I took at 28 billion, took in 28 billion and gave it to the farmers. That's why I was told by my great professional, Susie Wiles, I was told by my great professionals over there that they said, sir, please don't say that. It sounds too uh, obnoxious. I said, I don't mind being obnoxious because I'd say, I'd say, I'd say very strongly, I'd say, there's no way I knew I could lose Iowa, Nebraska, Wisconsin, any of the states. You have a lot of farming here. There's no way I could lose. No farmers ever voting. I gave him $28 billion from China. Nobody else would have asked for that. Could you imagine? You go up to Biden. He's a corrupt person. You go up to Biden, you say, you know, uh, I want you to ask China to pay $28 billion to our farmers. You know what he'd say? I can't do that. They paid me a fortune. I'm going to get myself in trouble. <laughs> they paid him a fortune. You think he can go up and ask him? They'll say, we're going to expose you. You know, he's a Manchurian candidate. That's what he is. All the currently dry canals will be brimming and used to irrigate everything, including your own homes and bathrooms and everything. You're going to be happy, and I'm going to get it done fast. They say that there's so much water up north that I want to have the overflow areas go into your forests and dampen your forests, because if you dampen your forests, you're not going to have these fire, forest fires that are burning at levels that nobody's ever seen before. We have very poor land management. And remember when I said that a couple of years ago as president? I said, Ben, we're, we're sending billions of dollars to California for forest fires. Their forests are burning down. And I was with a, a gentleman, a very top person in Austria. He said, sir, we have more flammable trees than you do on your coast. We don't have forest fires. We have land management. They take care of the land. They pick up the dead trees. You know, a tree doesn't burn very easily unless it's dead. Then it gets dry, and it burns. The leaves on the ground, they're five feet thick over here. They clean the, fo the floor. And everybody said, oh, how ridiculous management of a forest. You know, they all said, like, what the hell? But they don't have forest fires in properly run locations. What we have is, is horrible. And we can actually dampen our forests with water that costs us nothing that will come pouring down from the north. Wouldn't that be nice? If you had dampened floors, you wouldn't have forest fires. So we'll, we'll work on that, too. But I couldn't convince this guy, Gavin, to do it because he's an environmental maniac, only for political reasons. You know, he's no dummy. He knows it's wrong. He knows what they're doing is wrong. I watched him the other night being interviewed by the great Sean Hannity, and I said, you know, he understands it, but he's playing the game because that's the base, I guess. And but it's, uh, you know, people say to me, are you conservative? Yes, you're conservative, sir. I say, I'm conservative. But really what I am is a person of common sense. We need borders. We need elections, et cetera. We need water. We need water for places like California, for your farmers. I mean, those farms would make a fortune. You know, it's among the best land in the world, and nobody knows it. Nobody, nobody can do anything about it because of the water. So we're going to get it all done. And if they don't do it, it's very simple. We're just going to say, that's OK. You take care of your own forest fires and all the other things that are happening, billions and billions of dollars, and they'll sign whatever they want. We had COVID come in, and that sort of uh, changed our little direction for a little while. We had to do something there. We did a great job with that. You know, interestingly, when we uh, had the COVID, we took a big hit, every country in the world did. And by the time I gave it over to these lunatics, by the time we gave it over, the most incredible thing, our stock market was higher than it was just prior to COVID coming in. Nobody can even believe it. So it was higher than it was 
And what they're doing is they're really running on the fumes of Trump. They're doing a terrible job, inflation, all that. And if you really look at the, the numbers with the inflation, how that's destroying. You know, inflation is called a country killer. You can look at countries over the last 200 years. Big inflation, like we have and have had, but, but like we have. I don't know if you looked at your gasoline today. Six dollars. Six dollars. Oh, they, they said higher. I know. I heard $8. I didn't even want to say it because I can't believe it. But you have, uh, yeah, $8 gasoline in some parts of your area. And all over the country, gasoline's going way up. Don't forget, they, they kept it artificially low by taking the oil out of and the gas out of the strategic oil reserves. That's meant for wars. That's meant for money. That's not meant to keep people's gasoline down so they can win an election. That's meant for very serious purposes. I got it filled up. Now it's at the lowest point it's ever been at. They drained it, and that was artificial. But that only lasts for a fairly short period of time. So now new records are being set at gasoline. Gavin has become crooked Joe Biden's top surrogate, I think, because he doesn't think Biden is going to make it. That's why he's doing it. He doesn't think he's going to make it, and it won't be him so easy. He's going to have a big fight. However, because there will be a lot of Democrats uh, competing, it's going to be very interesting. But let's see. Look, some people say Biden's going to make it. Does anybody think he's going to make it to the starting gate? I mean, the guy can't find his way off of a stage. Look, here's a stage. Here's a stage. I've never seen this stupid stage before, right? I've never seen it. But if I walk left, there's a stair. And if I walk right, there's a stair. And this guy gets up. Where am I? Where the hell am I? Where am I? Nah, he's terrible. Terrible. You know, I'm much tougher on him than I used to be. Out of respect for the office, I was never like him. He's the most corrupt president, the most incompetent president we've ever had. But when they indicted me, and then again and again and again, I was never indicted. Now I'm setting records. Al Capone <laughs> was not indicted so much. Alphonse Capone. If you looked at Al Capone in the wrong way, he'd kill you. He was not indicted like me. I was never indicted. I didn't know. When they taught me at the Wharton School of Finance, they didn't talk about indictment. It's, no, it's a disgrace what's happening. They've weaponized elections. They've done everything. I mean, these are very bad people. But I used to talk relatively nicely about them. I wouldn't go out of my way. I wouldn't say the things I say now. Now I'm just all in because these people are bad and they're dangerous, and we have to stop them. I wouldn't say what I say now. I never did. I'd joke. I'd, I'd have a little fun with it, but I wouldn't call him. i call him the worst president in history. i call him the most corrupt president in history. And i call him the most incompetent president. Other than that, he's doing a fabulous job, I think, ladies and gentlemen. He's doing a fabulous job. Along with crooked Joe Biden, Newsom is also killing our car industry. Your cars are ridiculous, what's happening. And crushing our great automakers in Michigan, Wisconsin, Georgia. North Carolina and South Carolina, crushing them. Under his leadership, this is Newsom, California has imposed the most ridiculous car regulations anywhere in the world with mandates to move to all electric cars. The problem with an electric car, number one, you lose all your jobs because they're all going to be made in China and other countries. They're not going to be made here at all. I was up in uh, the other day in Michigan, like the other night, we had an incredible crowd, and they were the United Auto Workers, auto workers and, and others, but we were sort of focused on the auto workers. I said, you got to endorse Trump, because I'm going to save your industry. We're going to have a thriving car industry. <laughs> this lunatic is going to destroy. He's going to go all electric. Think about all electric. And I have no problem with electric. You should be able to buy an electric car. You should buy a gas-fired uh, car. You should buy a hybrid. You should buy whatever the hell you want. I mean, some people like electric. If you want to drive for 14 minutes to the candy store, it, electric is very good. But if you actually want to get into a car and drive for a few hours, you know, they're doing a couple of other ones with electric. They're going electric crazy. Uh, it doesn't work. 
uh, they want all electric army tanks now. Think of this. Think. So they want to have an army tank that's electric. You can't get it recharged. It doesn't go far enough. It doesn't go strong enough. But they want to have electric. So that we, can, we go into enemy territory, we will blast the shit out of everybody, but at least we will go in with environmentally nice equipment. Now, do you believe it? No, can you believe it? Then they want to have, then they want to have our jet fighters. Our jet fighters are the best way to go. They can make a turn on the size of a dime. Boom, boom. They want to use fuel that's a little bit better for the environment. So that as we're attacking some country, trying to devastate some country because they've been bad to us, we go in, we're dropping bombs all over the place, but at least we're not leaving any environmental footprint. <laughs> These people are crazy. And the problem is, you know, I stopped it because they came to see me. Sir, we have a new fighter jet. We think it's environmentally friendly. I said, who cares if it's if you're dropping bombs all over the place? <laughs> you're shooting everybody. No, it's true. You're shooting everybody. No, we think it's environmentally friendly. I said, what's the bad side? Well, there is one problem. It's about 15% less effective. That's a lot. You know what 15% is for a fighter jet? The difference between being shot down and shooting the other guy down. That's the difference. That's a big difference. And then another beauty, just while I'm on it, you don't mind if I go off script, do you? They like it. I have the greatest guys, Ross is back there and Vince, they're greatest guys. But you know, every once in a while you gotta go off script. You just can't. You gotta do it. But the, he, how about this one? The trucking industry, supply chain. We got enough problems. You never heard about supply chain during the Trump administration it's after we left. They want trucks now to go all electric. And they give them a very short period of time. So all these big, beautiful companies, they have these massive Peterbilt and throwers, they have these big, beautiful trucks that cost a fortune. They have a tank of diesel that goes 2,000 miles. Think of that. Up to 2,000. That's pretty much max. But 2,000 miles. An electric truck doesn't have the right torque or pull. We'll have to ask somebody. In other words, it's not as good. But it goes 300 miles. So they have to stop approximately six and a half times every time. And by the way, it takes a long time to juice them up. And I don't even talk about the fact that, you know, you don't have charges, because if it was good, you could build them, right? But, you know, they're building charges all over the place. It's a disaster. You know, they say, you know the greatest part about having an all-electric truck? The first 10 minutes after it's charged up, you're so happy. But after 10 minutes, now you're in a state of trauma because you're wondering, where the hell am I going to get a charge to get this truck? Very traumatic. It's a very traumatic experience. So you have a truck that goes 2,000 miles on those beautiful things. They got the bedrooms in there, good enough for Trump to live. I'd live in one of those trucks. You ever see those big, beautiful rooms? They make them like suites now. These trucks are incredible. They're unbelievable, actually. They're incredible machines. One of the top guys in the industry said they'll all go bankrupt. The supply chain will die. And, you know, I, I shouldn't even say this. I should let it happen because it's good for the election. But I don't want our country to be hurt. They won't do anything, though. You know, like open borders. You'd think they'd close the borders. They're, they're not doing it. You would think they would be closing the borders right now. They'd have they, — they don't care. They actually want — I think they want to destroy our country. But, but with the trucks, you would think that they'd sit down for about three minutes with trucking companies. And after three minutes, they'll say, sorry, we can't do that. I was with great boaters. They make a great South Carolina the other day. Great, great company. They make boats. Now they're starting on, they want an all-electric boat. They don't want to use the mercury and the different, you know, the gasoline-powered engines. They want all-electric. So I said to the head of the companies, companies like 50 years old, doing great, make hundreds and hundreds of boats. But now they're not selling well because the interest rates are too high. They're not selling the whole thing. They said, sir, 
I mean, I'm like an angel to them. I walk in because they had the best four years of their life. And he said, now it's all ending. But now they want to force him to go two things. Two miles an hour. You know what that is? A slow golf cart goes 10 miles an hour. <laughs> up to 90 miles. Up to 90 miles, two miles an hour. I said, how far does the boat go? 60 miles. So in other words, beyond what the boat goes, they want him to go just very slowly. And they want to do the new regulations are coming out, all electric boats. I said to the man, and this is a pro. You, if I could sit down with him in five minutes and know exactly what I, you have to do. I said, would it work? No, sir, because the entire boat would have to become a battery. It, the batteries take massive amounts. And it would be so heavy that it would sink. <laughs> and then I asked him a question. He said, you must have a science background. I've never been asked. If you're in a boat and you're sitting on top of a battery and the boat starts to sink, do you get electrocuted? <laughs> Let's say the boat is going down, and you have a choice. You got a shark that's 10. You got a shark that's 10 yards away. Or you can go down with the damn boat and get electrocuted. <laughs> Honestly, you know what I take? I'm taking the boat every single time. I want the boat. But this is where we are. They want army tanks. These people are crazy. But the trucking industry is probably worse than the auto industry. I have a friend that bought a car, and he thought it was environmentally good. By the way, it's environmentally bad because the batteries are a disaster. You can't get rid of them, all those things. But I have a friend, he bought a car because he wanted — he's a conservative guy, but he wanted to be — you know, he believed all this nonsense that they're putting out. And he bought a car, and he always makes a trip from Kentucky — politician — he makes a trip from Kentucky to Washington, D.C. quite a bit. And he'd usually make it and, you know, get out of the car, and he'd probably have gasoline left over. No big deal. Now he goes, and he's stopping all the time. Stop! Stop! The guy was a nervous wreck, like he got down there about four days later. The guy was a disaster. I said, are you okay? Yeah. I said, how's your environmental experience working? But, you know, electric cars fine if you're going to go short distances. You're going to go, you know, within a very short period of time and a uh, very short distance. But we have to make everything available. Hybrids are good. All gasoline is good. Don't forget, we have more gasoline than any country in the world. And we're sitting on top of it. And you see where the UAW is on strike. We were up with them, as I told you, and they're on strike. And they have a leader who hates Trump. He hates Trump. I said, listen, here's a story. I have an idea for the leader. He hates Trump because I'm a Republican, because they don't know all they can do is see Democrat. The Democrats are going to destroy you. You're not going to have any auto workers left, and it's going to be in two years. And I told them, you're negotiating these wonderful hourly wages, but it doesn't matter, because in two years, you're not going to have any jobs left. They lose $60,000 on every car they make, all electric, 60000 So these companies are, you know, for the most part, going to go bankrupt. But what's going to happen is they're going to close them up and have the cars made in China, where they can buy them much cheaper. You're not going to have any jobs left. So tell your union that if you're smart, they should endorse me immediately. And you're going to have a thriving — you're going to have a thriving life. And I believe the UAW workers will be on my side 95 percent. I really do. They, they're all screaming, we love Trump. You ought to see the crowd. We love Trump. But their union boss is a big Democrat. He likes Biden. What's to like? I said, what's to like? He has no idea who the hell you are. <laughs> and if you ask him tomorrow, did you meet with the union yesterday? He's going to say, I have no idea. <laughs> this guy. But you know what? His radical left Marxists that surround him in the office, they know who they are. You see, they know who they are, because he's not running the country. The people that are running the country are the people that are in the White House, and they're vicious. They're vicious, and they're destroying our country. Under a Trump administration, gasoline-fired engines will be allowed, but child sexual mutilation will be banned. Is that okay? You okay with that?
And we will prosecute those involved in California's depraved new laws that strip parents of parental rights. Can you believe? Can you believe? Who would have thought that 10 years ago, if somebody got up and said, we will stop child sexual mutilation, people would say, is this guy crazy? Who would have? We have to stop it. It's, it's going on at a level nobody, without parental rights. Or who would say that we will give parental rights over your children back to parents? Who would think that you would have to say, or that men in women's sports will not be allowed? Who would think? Can you imagine this? You know, Brian Erlacher, the big football player, great football player from Chicago. He's a massive guy, big, strong guy. He was a great uh, Hall of Famer and everything. He played for Chicago. And I was with him a couple of months ago, and we were standing at my golf club in Palos Verdes, Trump National, and he said, uh, mm -hmm. we're talking about things. And I looked at the size of this man, right? He's retired now, but had a Hall of Fame career, top, top of the line guy, great, great player, but big. And my manager came over, Lily, she's fantastic, but she's very small. She's the size of his leg, maybe. <laughs> and I took a picture of Lily and Brian Erlacher, and I said, we will not allow men in women's sports. And you see, and you saw the other day they had a weightlifting deal going on, and this one young woman, she was so proud. Her parents were in the front row. She was going to break the record. They put a quarter of an ounce on each side of the thing. Stood for 18 years. And she got up, and she well, I don't want to imitate it, because, you know, my wife, the First Lady, hates when I do this. She said, it's not presidential. I said, yeah, but people like it. It's true. She hates it. Our great First Lady, she'll say, I love your speech today, because it's all over the place. Look at the fake news back there. We get a lot of ratings. You know, we outdid the uh, debates in the ratings. You know? I made my speech to the UAW, and we got better ratings than they did. But, but no, she said it's not presidential. And I understand. She has one, two things. That, and she doesn't like when I dance a little bit to the music. I That's not that. And I say, I have a problem. Everybody wants it. They're screaming, dance, dance. But our great first lady. And she doesn't like when I talk about the swimmer either, but maybe I'll do it because this is a little bit, you know, this is a special group. So they get, these are Republicans that have been screwed for years in California. You deserve a little entertainment, right? You deserve it. So, so they put the weights on the end, little tiny things like a little nothing. Quarter of an ounce. And she gets up, oh. and her parents are so proud. Ha ah. 19 years. She's almost there. Ah. Boom. Couldn't do it. Then this guy who recently transitioned, he gets over the weights, looks at him. They said, Have you lifted before? No, I really haven't. She was a world champion, right? I haven't lifted too much, uh, a little bit. I did it recreationally. Oh, good. So he gets over the same weights. Bing, bong, bong, bing, 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 bing. <laughs> he broke the record, like, by 180 pounds. And then they say, we will have men in women's sports. These people are crazy. You know, I'm not a big fan of LeBron James, but I said this. I said this. I would like to meet with LeBron, say, LeBron, I've decided I'm going to get out of the presidential business, get out of the real estate business. I'm going to become a basketball coach of women. And I'm going to get him and four or five other guys to transition. <laughs> and we are going to have the greatest basketball team in history. We will be undefeated forever. We will make the legendary John Wooden into just a little asterisk. <laughs> no, it's, it's just crazy. The swimmer. Remember championship swimmer? She wanted to break the record. She was going to do it. She looks left. And these are people. They've been, you know, athletes. They've been sort of at the top level. They're sort of competing with the same guys. One of the PGA Tour guys said, yeah, I played with him when he was six. I played with him when he was 10, 12. You know, they're just a certain elite group of people. And uh, played with him all my life, and now they're on the senior tour. They're still playing against each other. 
Same thing with other sports. And she looks left, and she sees all of these uh, young ladies that she's been swimming against for years. She looks right, and she sees it. But then she looks over here, and there's this huge guy <laughs> with a wings — I say with a wingspan somewhat larger than Wilt the Still Chamberlain. Do you know Wilt? <laughs> the biggest wingspan anybody's ever seen, seven foot two. But she sees this guy, and she says, oh, wow. And I tell the story. It's a very sad story. She was seriously injured. You heard about this, right? You know what happened to her? She got injured with windburn, because this guy went by her so fast <laughs> that the wind gave her horrible, horrible burns. They took her to the hospital, but she'll make it. She'll be up. Okay. So much for the record. He finished the race, then he went to lunch. And as the other girl swam in, he was going to lunch. He said, let me go to lunch while I'm waiting for them to come in. Now, how ridiculous. And you know what? It's very demeaning to women. It really is. It's ridiculous. It's very demeaning. The state of California has no right to take children away from their parents and sterilize them. They take them away, sterilize them. Can you believe this? I will stop it immediately. All of that crazy stuff will be stopped. I will protect your youth. I will protect parents and their rights, and we will have them make decisions for their children. They are going to be making the decision. I will protect our country, and we will restore public safety to our community. <laughs> Under the radical left, Democrats, your once beautiful cities have been overtaken by millions and millions of illegal aliens. Psychotic drug addicts, bedlam, squalor. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. Nearly half of the stores in downtown San Francisco have shut down, and the rest are going to be shutting down. Targets, Walgreens, all of them, they're closing up because your DAs, they're Marxists, and they only go after Republicans. But your Marxist DAs, and they've given hoodlums the green light to pillage and plunder your stores to do whatever they want. In swanky Beverly Hills, armed bandits stalk their victims' home to rob them at gunpoint in their garage or their living room. They wait till the garage opens, and then they go in and they rob the hell out of them, and they take the trunk of their car and they break it open. People leave the doors and trunks of their luxury cars in Beverly Hills. They leave them hanging wide open so that people don't destroy their car, trying to break through and smash through the windows and the doors while rummaging through to steal the tires and other valuables. They leave their trunks open, because if they don't, they take a crowbar and they get it open. So they say, look, if you want to take my tire, it's okay. Can you believe that we've — and this is happening a lot. Can you believe that this is where our country has come? Under the Trump administration, we will bring back law and order to California. to stop the far-left prosecutors who are deliberately destroying our civilization and our culture, I will direct a completely overhauled DOJ to investigate every radical DA and AG in America for their illegal, racist, and reverse enforcement of the law. And we will start with the Marxist monsters unleashing mayhem on Los Angeles and San Francisco. In places where there is a true breakdown — and don't forget, when we were in office, we had a period of time, short period of time, where they were attacking Washington. Nobody likes to talk about this. And they were trying to rip down our statues. And I saw what was happening. It was really weird. It was — they wanted to rip down statues of Abraham Lincoln, George Washington. They didn't really care. They just wanted to destroy our culture. And I very quickly took an old law that I saw and I reinstituted it, and it basically said that if you rip down — anybody even attempting to rip down a statue of anybody in Washington, D.C., gets 10 years in jail. You don't get 10 years, but you're off nine and a half for good behavior. You get 10 years in jail. There's no anything. And amazingly, everything stopped. Everything stopped. But in places where there is a true breakdown in the rule of law, such as Oakland, Oh, Oakland is so bad. I will use every power at my disposal 
But it's not Oakland, it's in Los Angeles, it's all over. I mean, it's terrible. It's in places that you wouldn't even believe. But I will use every, everything I can, every single power at my disposal, including sending as many federal law enforcement assets as required to restore safe, safety and peace. And we will immediately stop. And some people are going to say, oh, this is terrible. I can't believe it. You know, these people are killing people when they go into the stores. You'll have 300 young people who are not looking for a good future walk into a store, big department store, and just pillage it. And if you happen to be there when they're there, they'll knock the hell out of you and kill you in some cases. And we will immediately stop all of the pillaging and theft. Very simply, if you rob a store, you can fully expect to be shot as you are leaving that store. Shot. And everything will immediately stop. You won't have any more of that. And you know our law enforcement is great, but they're not allowed to do anything. They're told to stand by, stand back, don't touch, don't touch. They watch hundreds of kids walk out with television sets. And if they do anything, they lose their family, they lose their house, they lose their pension, they get fired. We have the greatest law enforcement in the world. They know exactly what to do, but they're not allowed to do it by incompetent politicians. The word that they shoot you will get out within minutes, and our nation, in one day, will be an entirely different place. So. There must be retribution for theft and destruction and the ruination of our country. This is a phenomenon all over the world. People are watching this. This doesn't happen anywhere else. But we've taken away law enforcement. We've taken away their dignity. We have the greatest people. One of the most important things, maybe the most important thing, being a police officer, being somebody that's protecting us, and they're not allowed to do their job, and they want to do their job. Border Patrol, Brandon Judd, all these guys, Tom Homan, a great, a great border person. These people know exactly what to do. They know exactly what to do, and they'll do it. But with the uh, inner cities or just the cities. It's no longer inner cities. This is happening in areas that nobody believes. These kids walk out with televisions, and not kids, some are men, and a lot of it's organized now, where they actually go and take everything out of the store, and then you see this guy selling stuff five miles away or selling it from behind cars. It's a horrible thing. When the police are allowed to do their job, and that means, in some cases, shoot them. This will stop immediately, immediately. Our police are amazing. And it puts our police at great, it puts our police at great danger. But retribution on our, I mean, look, take a look. Retribution on our politicians and political opponents who are leading in campaigns by lots. Oh, we are beating them badly. That's what they really, that has to stop. What they've done is they've gone after opponents so that if you become president or some other job, but if you become president and you don't like somebody or if somebody's beating you by 10, 15, or 20 points like we're doing with crooked Joe Biden, let's indict the motherfucker. Let's indict him. <laughs> then I have to call up Harmy Dillon. And I say, Armit, will you get me the hell out of trouble, please? <laughs> Can you believe it, right? Armit, did you ever see anything like what's going on? I got indicted four times. I set a record. It's a record. Most indictments in the shortest period of time. Who is it? Trump. Trump. What the hell did he do? More than half of the unsheltered homeless people in America live in communist-run California. Think of that. As President, I will use all available powers to take the homeless, drug-addicted, and severely deranged 
and get them off your streets so that law-abiding citizens can once again enjoy the parks and public spaces, for which they're paying a lot of money in taxes. With all of the money we will save by ending mass illegal immigration, if you look at it, we will have a gigantic surplus, a gigantic surplus to get our homeless population the treatment they so clearly need. Now, many of the people will never be — they'll never be made better. These are people that, in many cases, are in such bad shape. They'll never be made better. Seriously addicted, and lots of other things happen when that happens. But we also, you know, don't forget, we're taking in the world's population. We're taking in the mental patients from all over the world. You have mental institutions that are empty right now in South America and many other places all over Africa, where they're bringing these people to the United States, having them walk into our country, and we're living with them. Some of these people are very dangerous. It's also you're taking uh, prisoners, many prisoners. If you look at the prison population in South America and all over the world, including Africa, Europe, I mean, all over the world, the prison populations almost, in some cases, doesn't even exist. They've taken all of it, and they're dumping it. We're like a dumping ground. They've dumped it into the United States. These are the idiots that are running our country. So it makes a really bad situation much worse. But we're going to have the largest deportation operation in the history of our country. You can't do this. Nobody can sustain this. Nobody. We will rapidly rebuild the most secure border in the United States, just as we had three years ago. Three years ago, we had the strongest border in the history of the United States. I built almost 500 miles of wall. I watched this loser, Christie, Chris Christie, he built 50 miles. No, no. You know what they say? If there's a two-by-four lifting, laying in the — and it's rotted, rusted, but it was there for 50 years, but it's not — they call that a renovation, so therefore, they don't give me credit. We take the two-by-four, we throw it away, we build a beautiful — exactly what — you know, the wall we built is exactly what Border Patrol wanted. We actually had mountain climbers. We had — you wouldn't believe how talented these people are. They can scoot up that with 100 pounds of drugs on their back. It's amazing. The panel's on top. They're — Decline. They're called decline panels. They make it very hard to climb over. Everything is done for a reason. And they're uh, steel. They wanted them to be steel with concrete inside and then rebar, hardened concrete and rebar. We did everything just as we should. We built almost 500 miles. We had another 200 miles that we would have built. We already achieved our objective. And I had to deal with guys like Mitch McConnell and Paul Rhino. Do you know Paul Rhino? <laughs> Paul Ryan. We had to deal with Paul Ryan, Mitch McConnell, all these guys, and uh, it was brutal. So what I did is I said, the hell with it. This is an invasion of our country. I'm taking the money out of the military, and we did. The military was great. It's an invasion. But we built almost 500 miles. Then I said, you know, let's build some more, because it, what happened is you'd have other areas that you wouldn't see then, and all of a sudden they were open, become open, it became paths, and we were ready to do that. It was all ordered. And the election was rigged, and then these guys come in, and they took that stuff, and they actually brought it away, and now they're trying to sell it for two cents on the dollar. Can you even believe it? It was all ready to be installed. And that's when I first believed that they actually want to have open borders, and nobody can explain it. They don't need the votes because they cheat. You know, they cheat so well, they don't need the votes. So, you know, everyone says, oh, they're doing it for the votes. No, they don't do it for the votes because they cheat so much that uh, it's a lot easier. I'll also use Title 42 to end the child trafficking crisis by returning all trafficked children to their families in their home countries immediately. An estimated 22 percent of students in L.A. public schools are from a household headed by an illegal alien. Can you believe it? In your community. Not only is this deeply unfair to American children whose classroom resources are being crucially drained and just horrible. Really, it's a cruel thing that's happening. They're being depleted, but it's turned many of your schools into war zones and dangerous gang members from MS-13. Your children are going to school with gang members from MS-13. Tell your children not to get into any fights with them, if you don't mind, okay? I want your children to be around. These are tough — these are tough people, tough kids. But you know who's tougher? ICE. But ICE doesn't get the credit. ICE — what they have to go through they go — a lot of gang members, MS-13 gang members, are in Long Island for some reason. They just — that's where they go. They love Long Island. And they killed, not so long ago, two beautiful 16-year-old girls walking to school, and they sliced them up with a knife because a gun is too fast. 
and they made them suffer greatly, both dead, both killed. And ICE will go in and they will, they call them PACs, PACs, not like a political PAC, slightly, slightly tougher. And they will go in and they will go into that PAC and they'll start swinging, swinging, swinging. I have a few friends here, they're pretty tough guys, a couple of them, they won't do this work, I will tell you. But ICE says that they're incredible patriots, they don't get any credit. We took them out by the thousands and thousands. We took MS-13 out of our country, thousands and thousands. And when I first got into office, I was told very strongly, very strongly, that you cannot bring them back to their country, El Salvador, Honduras, Guatemala, and others. That they put planes on the runway so our planes couldn't land. They blocked up all the bus routes. And they said Obama gave up because for years he tried, but he couldn't get them back, so they wouldn't even bother. They just let them stay in our country and kill people. And I said, really, how much money do we pay those three principal countries? They said, sir, we pay them $750 million a year for economic development. You know who the economic development is for? The head of the country, that's who it's for. They live very, very nicely in nice, beautiful chateaus. So we give them 750 I said, tell them, effective immediately, they're not getting any money. The following morning, early in the morning, I get a call from all three sides, not simultaneously, like separate, like one, two, eight o'clock, one, two, three. The three presidents, sir, we understand there's some difficulty. Are you having a problem? <laughs> yeah, you're not taking your people that you're sending us. You know, they send them to us. They don't send the good. They send the ones that they don't want, like MS-13, which is the toughest gang in the world. And typically speaking, when somebody comes and they have tattoos all over their face, I'm not discriminating at all, but typically it's not a positive thing, okay? <laughs> And I said, you're sending us your people, and you're sending us gang members and killers and murderers and people from jail, and we're bringing them back. You won't take them. You won't even let our planes land. Sir, we would like to uh, apologize for that. We didn't realize they're only doing it for about seven years, right? We will be glad to take them back, sir. When is our money starting again, sir? And uh, so I made a deal, and I still haven't given them the money, you know? It's a, I just held it back. What the damage they've done is so bad. But now Biden wants to give them $4 billion, I read the other day. $4 billion. For what? You know what it does? It makes them stronger in the sense of not economic development, but they steal more and the gang members get more. It's so corrupt. This whole thing is so corrupt. What we do is so crazy. It's so crazy. But we brought the MS-13 gang members and killers out by the thousands and thousands and brought them back into their countries. I will invoke the Alien Enemies Act, which is very powerful to review to remove. I mean, we're going to remove all known suspected gang members, drug dealers, and cartel members from the United States of America, ending the scourge of illegal alien gang violence forever. We're going to get them the hell out of our country. We don't want them in our country. This is just the start of what we will do to save California. And you got to remember our stories on water. It's no wonder the far-left lunatics are getting desperate to stop our movement by any means necessary. Okay. So, we have MAGA. Now, if you ask Biden, you know, did you see him the other night? He's saying, we must stop radical MAGA. You know what MAGA is? Make America great again, right? We must stop Make America Great Again. You know, it's, you have to be sort of, what a stupid thing to say. <laughs> but, but think of it. This is the greatest movement in the history of our country. Do you know, you know that Politicians for years, if they ran in New Hampshire or Iowa, if they ran in South Carolina, early states, any state, and if they came in like second, third, fourth, they would have a great career as a political pundit. They would be celebrated all. Pat Buchanan was a great guy, actually. But he came in, you know, did well in New Hampshire, just did well. Didn't win it, but did well. And for many, many years, he was a very respected voice on television, on shows, many people like that. We won 42 states. Think of this. We didn't come in second, third, fifth, ninth. We won 42 states. And then we won 50 states. And then we had an election that was incredible. And we won in 2016. And then we had a much better election, much, much better. We did much better in 2020. We got millions more votes. But we had a rigged election. I was told by the best pollsters, Fabrizio was great. Tony Fabrizio, McLaughlin, great. 
Those two, they told me, sir, if you got 63 million votes, you can't be beaten. We got almost 75 million votes that they report. That's what they report, because it's much higher than that. The most any sitting president has ever gotten. And at 3 o'clock in the morning, they said, oh, at 10 o'clock, we had it made. At 3 o'clock, we just found lots of ballots, lots of ballots. That's all they know how to do is cheat on elections. And frankly, they have to do that because their policies are no good. Their policies are no good. Open borders, high taxes. As you know, crooked Joe Biden and his radical left thugs have weaponized law enforcement to arrest their really leading opponent. It happens to be me. Do you mind if I mention that? <laughs> On fake and phony charges. They're fake charges. She knows better than anybody they are. This high-level election interference, and it's happening. This is what it is. It's called election interference. Try and destroy a man so that he can't get elected. And don't worry about the indictment or the subpoenas, because after the election, nobody cares. If I weren't running, I'd right now be you — know, I could be very happy. But I like this better, because we're making our country great. We're helping people, much more important. But it's all happening for a single reason, because I'm the only candidate that they don't want to run against. You know, they're people of great misinformation or disinformation, very similar meanings. I go both. Misinformation, disinformation, very close. They always say the opposite. So they say, we want to run against Trump. We want to run. If I'm leading, they want to run against Trump. They don't want to run against me. I mean, these polls are so incredible that are coming out. They don't want to run. They want to run against anybody but me. They'll take the sanctimonious in about two seconds. <laughs> but they say, we want to run against Trump. In last week's big ABC Washington Post poll, I'm leading by 10 points against Biden. <laughs> and in another one, I'm leading by 12. In another one, I'm leading by 7. They're not, they're not happy. They're not happy. And, in, and look, how could they be happy? How, who would vote for this person? Who would vote for this person? Our country is being destroyed. And, you know, I don't know. Maybe people feel sorry for him. That's the only way he can win, is if you feel sorry. But don't feel sorry for him, because he's not a nice person. And he never was a nice person. And he goes after political opponents and things in a way that nobody ever has done other than in banana republics or third world countries. That's what they do. That's exactly what they do. And in the brand new — thank you — in the brand new New York Post poll just came out an hour ago, I'm beating Biden by 11 points when asked who you think will win. And just a, a few minutes before I came up on stage, the morning console poll — that's a very big one. That's a very respected poll. I'm at 63 percent, and Ron DeSanctimonious is at 12 percent. And the others are way lower. And in New Hampshire, the sanctimonious has now fallen into fifth place. Oh, have I done a number on that guy? Have we done a number on him? Guy had no chance of getting elected governor. He came to see me. Little tears in his eyes. He came to see me. Sir, I could — I need your help. What's, what do you need my help for? I didn't even know him that well, but he was one of about 100 congressmen that would talk about impeachment hoax number one and impeachment hooks number two on television. So I saw him a little bit. I need your help, sir, of not winning in Florida. He was losing by, like, 30 points or more. Lose he was getting killed. He w it was over for him, with the primary taking place in a short period of time. And I said, Ron, if I were George Washington and Abraham Lincoln combined, and I came back from the dead, and I endorsed you, I don't think it would matter. You're gone, man. He said, sir, you're very popular in Florida. You know, I got — 1.2 million more votes than him. You keep hearing how many votes. I got 1.2 million votes than him. And I'm the one that turned Florida red, not him. He didn't turn Florida red. They all go on my fumes. But I said, if you do that — then I said, look, uh, you know, I didn't know the Secretary of Agriculture. His name is Adam Putnam. Nice guy. But he was leading by numbers that were, uh, like, not as much as I'm leading these guys by. But he was leading by big numbers. It was over. They were already measuring the carpet in the uh, in the state house. They were going to be they were going to have the most beautiful carpet you've ever seen in the mansion, as they call it. But 
I said, all right, Ron, let's do it. And I did it. And this guy went up like a rocket ship. I've never seen anything like it. He was dead. In other words, without me, he was dead. And then they asked him, and then I helped him get through the general election. By the way, he was running against a very hot guy. He turned out to be a crackhead, but these are minor problems. <laughs> But he was the hottest. Him and Stacey Abrams were the two hottest female male politicians in the country, Democrats. And he said, I won't be able to beat him. I gave him three giant Trump rallies. I said, you're going to win, Ron. I don't think so, sir, and he won, okay? Then four years later, they said, will you run against the president? He said, I have no comment. I said, no comment. That means that guy's running. That means he's running. And I started hitting him very early. Harmeet said, don't please, sir. He's a Republican. Don't hit him. He's a Republican, sir. I said, I don't give a damn if he's a Republican. <laughs> Gotta hit him. <laughs> he's a Republican, Harmeet. He's a Republican. I don't care what the hell he is. And I hit him hard, and he's crashing like a bird that's seriously wounded in flight. <laughs> and here in California, we're leading by a gigantic margin with Trump at 48, and DeSantis, who's now at a number that's so low, they don't even know what that. I think they've given up on him. But we're, we're leading by close to 50 points, 5-0. And for NFL fans, any, do you have any NFL football fans here? We will not play prevent defense. You know what prevent defense is? You hold them scoreless for almost four quarters, and you just have to do it once more. And they go to prevent and prevent, right? All the football fans are nodding. There's only about 2% of you in this room. <laughs> prevent is something that's supposed to work, but it doesn't. It means you get soft. We don't get soft. We're also doing historic margins with the unbelievably great Hispanic American community. They love us, and I love them. In 2020, we did better than any president in more than 50 years, and we're going to win record numbers of Hispanic American votes next November. And the African American male has been unbelievable. Females have got to come along a little bit. Got to come along. But we're doing great. We're doing great. The radical left, that's right. And people from Vietnam love Trump. Where are, where are the Vietnam? Oh. They are great. So many great. They are so great. They come all dressed up in those beautiful outfits. We love you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election of 2020, and we're not going to let them rig the presidential election of 2024. Do you hear that? That's you. Every time the radical Democrats Marxist, communist, fascist, indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor because I'm being indicted for you. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. How about I go home to our elegant first lady that people really love? I go home. Darling, uh, tonight about 6 o'clock, I think I'm being indicted again. Go. Oh. The good news is she's now taking it a little bit lighter, you know, like, oh, again? How many times can you do it? I heard they were going to do it two more times, and they said, don't do it to their people, to their maniacs. Never forget, our enemies want to stop us because we are the only ones that can stop them. The only ones. And we're going to get your situation taken care of in California for the vote. They want to take my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me. They're after you. I just happen to be, unfortunately for me, standing in the way. Here is just some of the agenda in closing that we will immediately implement when we become we, we. It's all of us. We're all going to become. That's what it is. So this is a group effort. It really is. To, when we become the 47th president, of the United States of America. I will totally obliterate the deep state. We were starting. We knocked out Comey and all these guys. It, it is deeper than anyone ever thought, but we got rid of a lot of bad ones. Comey got rid of them. Oh, sir, why did you fire him? They found out. 
Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after I win the presidency, I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled. It'll get settled very fast. We want to have people not be killed. They're killing hundreds of thousands of people. Horrible. Would have never started if I were president. So many things. You wouldn't have had inflation. You wouldn't have had the war of Ukraine. China wouldn't be talking about Taiwan. And you wouldn't have had the most embarrassing day in the history of our country, that horrible situation that took place in Afghanistan. You wouldn't have had that. I think it was the lowest point. I think I'd actually convinced Putin to go in. He looked at that. He said, anybody that incompetent, I should do whatever the hell I want. And I'm the only candidate who can make this promise to you. I will prevent World War III. And we're much closer than anyone else. We're much closer. And this would be a war like no other, because the level of power from weaponry, from all of the weapons, the new weapons and the nuclear weapons, has never been anything like it. This would not be two army tanks running around shooting each other. This is a level of power that nobody's ever seen before. This is obliteration. And I will have it stopped. I will have it stopped. To stop Biden's inflation catastrophe, bring down the cost of energy for Californians to become energy independent again and even energy dominant. We were ready to become energy dominant. We were totally independent. As we were just three years ago, think of it, three years ago we were energy independent. Oil was at $1.87 a gallon. Can you believe it? We will drill, baby, drill. Going to bring down inflation. Way, way down. That'll knock out inflation, a lot of it. Then we're going to get your interest rates down so you can actually go out and buy a house if you want it. Right now, nobody's buying houses because they can't get any money from the banks, right? On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content on our children. And here in California, they're wiping away the names of Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Jefferson, and George Washington off your schools. Under my leadership, we will once again teach our children to love America, and we will have great schools that lead to great jobs so that our children can have incredible, beautiful lives. I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or mask mandate. No mandates. You want it, you can have it, but no mandates. As I said, very importantly, I will keep men out of women's sports. We will do that. And we will gain total independence from China, and I will hold the Chinese Communist Party accountable for unleashing the China virus upon the world. Something will happen with that. We will make the Silicon Valley tech tyrants answer for their illegal censorship. And we will restore free speech in America. What they did during the election was horrible. FBI and Twitter, they caught Twitter files. The 51 intelligence agents that all said the laptop from hell was from Russia. It wasn't from Russia. You know where it was from? It was from Hunter. <laughs> Just as I did for four years, I will fully uphold your Second Amendment. Nothing happened with it. And that wasn't easy. And I will secure our elections with special emphasis and force placed on California so that we can go all paper ballots, voter ID, same-day election, and you actually have to go to a booth. But until then, Republicans must win and we must compete. We have to compete. We have to win this election. If we don't win this election, we're not going to have a country left anymore. So, in conclusion, this is what we must do to restore our country to greatness. The USA is a mess. Our economy is crashing. Inflation is out of control. China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea have formed together as a menacing and destructive coalition, and a very dangerous one at that. Our currency is crashing and will no longer be the world standard, which will be our greatest defeat in over 200 years. If that happens, we will 
revert to a status that you wouldn't believe how low we will be. It won't happen with me, not even a chance. Just like Russia would never have invaded Ukraine, and China would not be even thinking about raiding Taiwan, and we would have left Afghanistan with dignity and strength and pride instead of our greatest embarrassment in history. We would have kept Bagram, the big air base, biggest air base in the world. We would have kept it, not because of Afghanistan, but because Bagram is one hour away from where China makes its nuclear weapons. And we left in the dark of night. We left the lights on, and we left the dogs behind. For those people that love dogs, they always say, did they take the dogs? No. And uh, if you probably know anything about the Taliban, they're not, they're not big into the world of dogs, so you can imagine. If you took the five worst presidents in the history of the United States and added them up, they would not have done near the destruction to our country as crooked Joe Biden and the Biden administration have done. We are a failing nation. We are a nation in decline. And now these radical left lunatics want to interfere with our elections by using law enforcement. It's totally corrupt, and we won't let it happen. That's why you must show up to vote in the California primary on Super Tuesday, March 5th. March 5th, that's your first one. And we'll get to November. Get every Republican you know and bring them out for Team Trump. And we're a team. We're all a team together. Remember what I said. MAGA, make America great again. America first. This is the greatest political institution ever in the history of our country. There's never been a movement like this. Newt Gingrich, who's a great guy, said last night, it's a phenomenon the likes of which has never happened in our country before. Look at the crowds. Forget about this crowd. Look outside. Thousands and thousands of people knowing they can't get in, and they come anyway. 2024 is our final battle with you, at my side, 2022, it's all a battle. If you want to know the truth, stand up. Let me see. Stand up. Whoa. Thank you. Thank you, Dad. It's all a battle. But 2024 is our great battle. We have to win. If we don't win that battle, we will not have a country anymore, in my opinion. With you at my side, we will demolish the deep state. We will expel the warmongers. From our government, we'll get them in. These people that want wars in every place, places that nobody ever heard of. We lose our youth, we lose our money, and they don't even want us in their territory. We will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communists, Marxists, and fascists. We will throw off the sick political class that hates our country. We will rout the fake news media. We will evict crooked Joe Biden from the White House. And we will finish the job once and for all. And I make this promise to you, the great people of California, we are going to save your state. The great silent majority is rising like never before. And under our leadership, the forgotten men and women will be forgotten no longer. With your help, your love, and your vote, we will put America first, and we will make America great again. Thank you, California. God bless you all. God bless America. Thank you. Thank you.